It's a modern day David versus Goliath story. The billion dollar Epic Games picks a fight with the trillion dollar Google and comes out with a decisive legal victory. But the prize is not money, it's much bigger than that, and could dramatically change the mobile app development landscape as we know it. It is December 12th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. Programmers make for terrible lawyers, and I'm a programmer, but luckily I have a lawyer friend who helped me analyze this case. So Epic Games makes video games you may have heard of like Fortnite, in addition to the Unreal game engine. Now on the Google Play Store, apps that have over 1 million dollars in revenue are required to pay a 30% cut for any in-app purchases. Simply put, Epic Games thinks these fees are exorbitant and unfair. It believes Google holds an illegal monopoly with the Play Store and Google Play billing. What's interesting though is that Android is an open source platform based on Linux, and there are alternative app stores out there where you can distribute Android apps without Google, although the vast majority of consumers use the Play Store. In addition, it's not illegal to have a monopoly, like you can't be penalized just for building a good product and being successful. However, a monopoly becomes illegal when you exploit the market, either through price discrimination, exclusive dealings, or tying contracts. Now, Epic Games has also been fighting a similar battle with the Apple App Store, but it mostly lost that case, and that ruling was recently held up after they appealed. I didn't hear no bell. But yesterday, Epic Games won a unanimous decision where the jury said that Google engages in anti-competitive behavior. Google will appeal, but why did Apple win and Google lose? Well, that's where things get interesting. Apple has an entirely closed off system, a walled garden where iOS is not open source, and they don't allow alternative app stores for iOS devices. You can think of Apple phones and the App Store as all part of the same product, and developers have nowhere else to go. Everybody has to think different in the exact same way. Now that feels more unfair compared to Google's ecosystem, where the operating system is open source, there are multiple app stores out there, and Google even has an alternative in-app purchases program, although it's currently just a pilot program. Now in Apple's case, developers have nowhere to go, but in Google's case, they need to convince developers that the Google Play Store is their best option. One thing we learned about in the case is Project Hug. Give me a hug. No way. Come here. I'm not coming over there. Let's go. Forget it. A project where Google offered game developers tens of millions of dollars, and even offered Epic Games $147 million to launch Fortnite on Google Play. The thing is though, these payments didn't block a developer from launching on another platform, as long as they launched on Google Play the same day. So it doesn't really look like they're trying to block other app stores, except there's also these internal documents, like this one, where a Play Store executive brags about how they got Riot Games, creator of League of Legends, to stop development on its own app store. Game developers are absolute cash cows for the app stores, and the company bragged internally about how it's one of the most profitable businesses in the world. But these cash cows can't be milked if they take their games to their own platforms. As a small-time developer, it's important to understand that the top 1% gets treated differently. Companies like Spotify can bypass app store fees, and Netflix was offered a 10% cut. In addition, Google had agreements with Chinese OEMs to give manufacturers a cut of Play Store fees to prevent them from pre-installing other app stores. And for all these reasons, the jury decided that Google did a big no-no. I guess the lesson to be learned here is that if you want to to dominate tech, build a fully closed off system like Apple, and don't try to build an open system like Google where you need secret deals to dominate it. Now the next step is for Epic and Google to get back together in January to remedy the lawsuit. Epic doesn't want money though, it wants fundamental changes to the way the app stores work, which is likely good news for all the mobile developers out there. But this is all one guy's fault, Tim Sweeney. At one point Google even considered taking a large stake in Epic Games, but then decided against it once they found out that Tim Sweeney was the controlling shareholder, because he's a bit of an outlier giga chat as far as tech billionaires go. And the fact that he had the balls to go up against big tech and actually won, ironically embodies this quote from Steve Jobs, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.